It's rare that I mention safety in any of my videos. I just assume most people have some common sense. Uh, and this project will require common sense safety. If you don't have any common sense, don't mess with this. Um, we're going to be using a, an acid, a pretty strong acid. Even though you can pick it up, you know, in Lowe's or Home Depot, it's dangerous stuff. You need to read the label, make sure you know what you're doing. I'm experimenting with ways to uh, etch copper uh, other than ferric chloride. Uh, you know, back 20, 30 years ago, I made a bunch of my own printing circuit boards and used ferric chloride. Uh, but all the radio shacks have gone away in my area. I, I don't know if the company, the whole company's went away, but uh, it's not as easy just to run down on the, to the store in town and grab some uh, ferric chloride. So I was looking for an alternative way to uh, etch copper. And um, I I've came across this recipe and uh, here's my experiments with it. Stopped at Lowe's uh, in the paint department. They have muriatic acid. Uh, went next door to Walmart, grabbed some hydrogen peroxide and some cheap plastic containers. And then dug around my scrap box, found some pieces of copper from uh, some knife bolsters. And um, my wife had got this uh, fingernail polish on clearance for a quarter. And it's uh, after Halloween, some cheap fingernail polish. Then I cut some small pieces up to do my test with. Over at the belt sander uh, with a 120 grit belt, I just cleaned off some of the corrosion and oxides. And then followed that uh, with some acetone to get the fingerprints and oils and stuff like that off. You know, the idea here is to make some sort of a chemical resist and uh, that'll protect the areas you don't want to etch. So I'll just put some random designs, uh, a character or two on there. I've used fingernail polish in the past uh, with ferric chloride to uh, you know, mask certain areas and uh, I wasn't real confident that the Sharpie would work that well. So like the Sharpie, I just made some random design on there for the test. So this is going to be a, a good test of um, Sharpie versus fingernail polish. Oh, this little two-pack of containers is perfect. Uh, I, need, I wanted one container to mix the acid in and uh, another tank to be a, a rinse tank, you know, to uh, deactivate the acid. And I don't have the luxury of running water in my shop, so I just uh, picked up a jug of cheap water. And, uh, you know, if you're doing a part that really matters, you might even want to put you a little tablespoon of uh, baking soda or something in there with your water. Make sure you completely kill the acid. Grab your hydrogen peroxide and we're going to mix it two parts hydrogen peroxide to one part muriatic acid. You know, I don't remember much about high school chemistry, but uh, I do remember that you always put acid into water, not vice versa. So start off the same way here. Let's get your uh, peroxide in the container first and then add the acid to the hydrogen peroxide. One of the worst things about muriatic acid is the fumes that come out of the container when you open it or pour it. I have a box fan to the right of the camera that's constantly pushing fresh air across my workbench so I don't have to breathe any of the fumes. Within just a few seconds, you'll uh, start seeing a green color coming off that copper. Having uh, no experience with this mix, uh, I just randomly chose 15 minutes for my first test. Cleaned off the uh, tops there with some acetone and I was pretty surprised at how well it etched just in 15 minutes. I mean, there's a, a pretty noticeable depth there. I mean, you, you catch your fingernail on it. You can see it. The, the light catches it. You can also tell the piece here with the Sharpie 
it's not quite as uh, resistant to the acid as the fingernail polish. So I'll say a clear winner uh, between the two is the fingernail polish. The Sharpie does work, but it's not quite as good as the fingernail polish. But fingernail polish uh, does have one drawback. It's really hard to draw a design with the uh, brush that's included in the bottle. And uh, so I got to thinking, hey, I wonder how a paint pen would do. So for test number two, um, this actually is a logo of a friend of mine for his some of his woodworking products that we had been discussing, and it was on my mind, so I thought, oh, this would be something, something good to try. So this time around, I'm going to go 30 minutes to see if I can get a deeper etch. This is the same uh, mix from the first test. So after the initial 30 minutes, I looked in there and uh, the paint pen seemed to be holding up fine. So I, I'm going for, I want to go for a really deep etch. So why not? Let's go for another 30 minutes. See how it does. So after one hour, uh oh, paint pen didn't do so well. Well, it was getting late, and um, it didn't even etch very well. And at the time, I didn't really uh, understand why. More on that in a minute. All right, so new day. Um, go back to the fingernail polish. I want to try to redo that same uh, logo, which was part of my uh, problem with the fingernail polish is how hard it is to actually draw with. So I roughed it out best as I could. And I took a little carbide scribe and uh, cleaned up the edges, kind of reshaped the fingernail polish to where it didn't look too bad. So I dropped it into the same solution I had from the night before. And uh, again, I thought, well, we'll start off with 30 minutes, see how it goes. But after 30 minutes, um, I couldn't really tell that it had done very much. So I just left it in there for four hours. It was about at this point I realized that uh, this mixture has a short shelf life evidently. Uh, you, you can't mix up a batch, save it, and reuse it. You can see it barely even etched. So I uh, cleaned it up a little, uh, touched up my paint mask, and uh, mixed up a whole new solution. Yeah, it's the same as before, two parts peroxide to one part muriatic acid. I got to looking around my shop, uh, I was trying to find something I could make kind of an interesting mask or a stencil, and I noticed a uh, an old air filter. And if you take the paper element out of an old filter, a lot of them, they have some kind of interesting metal screens inside them. Uh, so I grabbed another old uh, copper uh, knife bolster, and I thought I'd try the fingernail polish on one side and the um, Sharpie on the other. Uh, although the Sharpie doesn't mask as well, it does let a little of the acid eat through the thin spots, so it, it kind of creates a neat texture. It's just a different effect. So on that new batch, the new mix, uh, I let it etch for 30 minutes, and uh, you can see there it's it etched pretty deep. You can see the edges there. And like I suspected, the uh, Sharpie, it, it sort of lets the acid eat through it in spots. So it comes out with a unique kind of texture. Yeah, so I'll take a little acetone and get the, uh, the mask off of there. They've got some pretty nice edges to it. I mean, I didn't try to measure it, but you can see there, it's it's pretty deep. I'm not real sure if I could think of a real world example I would want to use this, you know, exact pattern, but it was more of a just to kind of see the technique, see if it would work. Now, the side with the Sharpie, that almost looks kind of interesting. I think maybe you could take that somewhere. 
You know, another thought that came to me was, I wonder if you could use this technique to make a, a brand for branding woodwork. And uh, although you would have to remember if you were going to do this on purpose, you would uh, have to make your image in reverse. But, you know, just kind of a proof of concept, hey, I think you could probably make it work. You might want to etch a little deeper, but promising. Now, I did have one last thought. I thought, what would how does copper react to just straight acid? Um, I thought I could probably get online, research the chemical reason that the mixture requires the peroxide, but hey, it only took a minute to try it. And as you can see, it doesn't do hardly anything. Barely etched it. Well, after all my experiments, I'm going to chalk this up as a success. I think this uh, this muriatic acid hydrogen peroxide formula works great. Actually, I think it works better than the ferric chloride. Uh, about a 30 minute etch on a, on a new mix, a new solution, and man, it comes out really great. So, I don't know, try it. Let me know what you think. I'm pretty impressed.